We are back. Welcome to Tech Talk. Today we're going to talk about one of the biggest, if not the biggest, um, podcasters, YouTubers, just call them influencers, on the planet. I was going to say in the space, but forget the space, on the planet, period. Joe Rogan, give it up. I'm a big fan of Joe Rogan for entertainment value. I do not take Joe Rogan's politics or understanding or lack of understanding of any medical issues into any consideration of, at all. I do not go to him for that. I watch real experts in different fields, political analysts and medical professionals and scientists. So I'm not really that put off by his issues with, um, you know, uh, vaccines and mandates and all that. I do feel that the news uh, treated him incorrectly. They slandered his name. I think he should sue them. Uh, for saying that he took the horse medicine, um, not because I'm taking any stand on whether ivermectin uh, works or has potential to work as something that would help um, with COVID. It's not even that important anymore because we have other things like anti and something antibodies. We've got so many treatments plus a lot of um, immune boosting things that will help you get through COVID as well as now a vaccine which lessens the severity of the COVID. So all those things together, you know, I'm not really going to be looking into ivermectrum. I don't care if he and a few other YouTubers have claimed that they, they took it in and helped them. So that being said, um, I want to talk about, for entertainment value, Joe Rogan's entry into Spotify, right? This was a huge news story when it first happened. Um, you guys remember he went to um, Spotify. And at first I was really heartbroken because I was like, oh no, he's leaving YouTube. But he didn't really leave YouTube, as you guys know. He left his old content up and all of his new podcasts, his full length two to three hour conversations um, are only on Spotify. But then he takes little seven to 10 minute snippets of good conversations, things that came up, and he puts those up on YouTube as a promo to direct people to the full podcast. So I still watch his stuff on, excuse me, on YouTube, as I'm sure a lot of people do. I may get around to checking him out on Spotify, but I haven't done that yet. Um, I don't think I always really listen to his long form. I wasn't a subscriber who like every podcast he comes out with, I watch it, you know? I just wanted to, research certain topics. So if he had someone on talking about something that was of interest to me, I wanted to hear them when they talked about that. So I always listen to the short YouTube clips anyway. Let me know if you guys um, watch Joe Rogan, if you're a fan of his. Now, Rob Litterst from thehustle.com, he wrote an article and he asked this question. I found this very interesting. So I wanted to put it to you guys out there. The question is, was Joe Rogan's Spotify deal worth it. At first, I thought this was obvious. Yes, he received $100 million, similar to Howard Stern when he made the move to you know, Sirius XM satellite radio years ago. Um, nobody passes up that type of money, right? So no matter what the downsides are, of course, it was well worth it. Um, well, according to Lithurst, the, the writer at The Hustle, um, it depends on what you value. And you know, Joe Rogan was already a multimillionaire before getting that deal. And so I found this perspective refreshing and wanted to break down the article to you and offer it up to you guys for discussion. So let's uh, take a look. I'm actually going to put up some of the article. In uh, Joe Rogan, who signed a deal with Spotify, uh, worth $100 million plus, has lost influence since making his podcast exclusive to the platform. So how do you measure the influence? He hasn't lost his influence with me, but they've got metrics. So let's take a look at this. Here's the facts. In May 2020, Joe Rogan um, signed the 100 million licensing deal, giving streaming platform exclusive access to his podcast. Again, that's for the new podcast, not his old stuff. He didn't pull it all down off of uh, YouTube. It's still there. Spotify's market cap jumped by approximately $4 billion within one day of the announcement. So it was great for them. On paper, the deal looked like a win-win. Let me remove some of this uh, branding at the bottom so that uh, 
can see everything. Let me take the banners down. Hang on. Pull that, pull that. All right. A new report from The Verge suggests that Spotify got the better end of the deal. Let's see why. Since going exclusive, Rogan has lost influence. Spotify hasn't revealed Logan's listenership numbers. So the report, you know, looked at a, a variety of metrics before and after the signing, including Twitter followers. <clears throat> Pre-Spotify, Rogan's guest averaged 4,000 new followers after an appearance on the show. Since going exclusive, that number has dropped to 2K. So if if I went on the show and I was lucky enough that he was interviewing with me, I would expect an average of 4,000 new followers right after that show. Since going exclusive on Spotify and no longer being on YouTube, uh, that number has dropped to only 2,000. Okay, what about Google? Google Trends. In 2020, Rogan maintained steady interest and regular spikes. Since going exclusive, his baseline interest has dropped, and he's only spiked two times. Okay, YouTube, YouTube subscribers. Pre-Spotify, Rogan averaged 265,000 new YouTube subscribers per month. Post-deal, he's averaging 100,000. You know, I, even though it's saying that, Yes, so he, he's no longer averaging as much. He's averaging 165,000 less subscribers per month on YouTube because he's not there as much anymore. But he's gaining all the Spotify listeners. So I want I would like to see data from how much he's gained. So possibly he traded. I'm going to lose some of this, but I'm going to gain some of that. This is similar to me of what happens when a music artist, let's say someone like a Kanye West, uh, comes out with a new album in a new style, and his old fans don't like it. So they say, I want the old Kanye. So people want the old Joe Rogan, right? So that's okay. Kanye sacrifices some core supporters who will say, oh, he changed his style. He's selling out. I don't like the new direction he's going in. Because this new stuff that he's doing is going to gain him new people that like that, that weren't following him before that. And I think that's true of Joe Rogan as well. So it's it's a trade off. Um, yes, he's going to lose some YouTube, but he's going to gain a bunch of Spotify. I, I don't think that they're going to give us those numbers in this article. So let's continue on and see what other points are made from the hustle here. All right now it says Rogan isn't the first big name to lose influence after going exclusive. When the deal was announced, Andrew Wilkinson of Tiny compared the move to Howard Stern's deal with Sirius, just like I did, arguing that Rogan got ripped off. But is he saying Howard Stern got ripped off? I do know that once Howard moved to Sirius, I didn't I didn't listen anymore. And then even when I got Sirius XM a couple years later myself, I still didn't watch his show because I got used to not following him. I kind of lost interest. But I watched I, – I not watched. I listened religiously to his show when it was on the radio on Celestial Radio, as they call it, FM. Uh, citing Stern's waning cultural influence, he questioned whether Rogan's payout was worth the trade-offs of going exclusive. Now, before Howard Stern made the move, he had been on Celestial Radio for like 30 years. So he did that. He conquered everything. He became number one in his local area. Then he became number one syndicated. He took out all the other shock jocks. Then he got a television show, cable TV show. That had high ratings. He he ran for governor as a joke. He, he became a cultural icon. He released a movie in theaters. So he had already been winning for 30 years, and then he moved to Sirius XM. So I can't say that Howard Stern lost, even if he lost some influence after that, because maybe he was going to lose some influence anyway. It runs its course at some point. He's not gone. His fans still have him there. And he got, you know, tens of millions or maybe a hundred million dollars. I think he might've gotten a hundred million also for his move, but correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. Maybe, maybe I'm off. Let me take a look here. A few people commenting. Oh, thank you. Uh, Samo films. Appreciate it. So, uh, yeah, uh, but let's get back to Joe Rogan. So Howard, I'm not sure if that was a big deal. Joe Rogan was on for six to eight years building his platform. And then for the last three or four years, he was the biggest thing in on YouTube and the biggest podcast. He gets more views than television shows, news shows, higher ratings than anything on cable TV. So he wasn't just beating all the other um, influencers out. He actually has more influence and more 
views on his show than anyone in the world. So, and he only had that for a short period of time. So while I don't think I would agree that Howard Stern lost by moving to Sirius XM, he already had been on top and been the king for like 20 years. Maybe they have a point with Joe Rogan. Let me know if you agree or not. But specifically, Joe Rogan lost a direct relationship with his subscribers. I'm no longer going to watch him on YouTube and leave the comments underneath. Someone who watches Spotify, let me know if they have a robust comment engagement or if they even have comments on Spotify. I'm, I'm not even sure if that's a thing. Building Spotify's recurring revenue instead of his own. Mm, yeah, their revenue went up by $4 billion, but he got $100 million. So yes, he's when you that's called an advance. It's like if you're a rec recording artist, you could take more money up front and then you get less on the back end. Um, but the advantage is you already got your money. So whenever you do something, it could tank and not do well. You could put out an album and you're expecting it to do so well and it hardly sells anything and you don't make any money. If the label already gave you a couple million dollars in advance, hey, it's up to them to sell the album now. Hey, I did my thing. I turned in the album. I'll promote it. But if it doesn't make money, I still got that money in advance. Yes, I will owe it to the label and I'll have to pay it back over time. But I already saw that money so I could make money with that money and I could use it for what I need to use it for, including promoting the record. But let's go back from the, the music business back into Spotify. So Rogan could have went on Spotify. Nobody could have tuned in. They could have not liked the move. And Spotify could have made mistakes with its marketing and it could have lost money. But he's guaranteed to get his $100 million. He got that as part of the contract. So um, I again, I don't know if Rogan lost by doing this. Another point, serving a smaller audience and having less impact. Mm. Now, I, again, I would like to see the numbers on Spotify, but I'm going to assume that Lithurst at The Hustle uh, did his research and that he is serving a smaller audience. So he is having less impact. Uh, but let's, let's keep it real at the end here. Who needs influence when you can get the bag? That's the question. Okay, uh, seeing the downsides and of exclusivity firsthand will likely influence up and coming podcasters facing similar decisions. Alice Cooper of Caller Daddy and Dex Shepard of On Armchair Expert. Uh, they both signed exclusive deals to Spotify recently. Will others be so fast to follow suit? Well, I'll tell you this, Spotify can come to me Come to the Cyber Sky and offer me a deal because I want to move into Spotify space anyway. And so, you know, rather than me struggling from the bottom trying to build my my platform there, uh, at the same time as building a YouTube platform and the same time as going on Instagram and TikTok and all the other platforms that I use, hey, if you want to pay me to be exclusive, I'll shut all of this down. Give me $100 million and I'll just be on Spotify. Done. But in Rogan's case of course i'm being sarcastic uh in rogan's case it's hard to argue with 100 million payday but there's still a good chance that he sold himself short so my question to you the audience is um what do you think did joe make a mistake by taking the spotify deal and would other influences be wrong to follow is the money worth leaving behind a community on your old platform who may not follow you if you switch? What would you do? Some of you are influencers. Um, if you were offered that much money to make the switch, if you were Joe Rogan, let's put yourself in his shoes now. You're the number one guy on YouTube. You've got 265,000 new um, followers and subscribers every month, I think they said. And you could lose that. And you definitely will lose some of your audience and some of your influence. Um, what would you do? Would you make the switch for that kind of money? And finally, tell me what you think I should do if I'm ever offered a bag. It might not be a hundred million. It might be a hundred thousand. Whatever it is, if I'm offered a bag to go to an exclusive platform, maybe a new platform that's coming out. I know some new platforms that are being worked on that are going to run on the blockchain that'll be coming out soon. So at that point, if, if someone were to offer me, you know, to pull all my content from social media, that means cancel my Facebook page, the Cyber Sky page, not my personal, uh, Twitter account, Instagram, TikTok, 
and YouTube. I moved to this new exclusive platform uh, that's giving me the bag. You know, what should I do? Do you think I would be wrong for doing that? Let me know your thoughts in the comment below. If you learned something, you can show your appreciation by smashing, smash, Hulk smash that like button, please. And share the video on social media. Share it later even when it's not live. Um, let people know so we can build our audience right here on the CyberSky channel. Make sure you're subscribed and ringing the bell for notifications of the next video. I'm trying to go live more often, but all these technical difficulties have been stacked against me. And one by one, I'm knocking them down. I'm getting a new computer. I increased my Wi-Fi. I've got a professional mic now. You like it? Got my Shure MV7. Um, and I'm doing all these things. The lighting is good. I, I'm trying to make it easier to create better content temp for you. I hope you guys appreciate it. Yeah, so getting back to Joe Rogan, let me know your thoughts. Like I said, if you learned something, smash that like button, um, share on social media, et cetera, et cetera. When we return, we will talk about how crypto is being used for philanthropy and plus something crazy that Star Trek um, creator Gene Roddenberry is doing with NFTs. You won't believe this. It has to do with bacteria and DNA. This is the craziest story of the show. All right, we'll be back. Crypto Gems up next. Welcome to the Cyber Sky. Let's learn something. <laughs>